I'm Trevor Shaw. And I'm Rebecca Hollis. And this uh, Trevor is going to be uh, part of our interview today on behaviour management, and he has a lot of experience in it. So I'm just going to talk to him about a couple of things uh, in schools that he's experienced. So Trevor Shaw, can you please tell us just a little bit um, about your teaching experience? Well, I've been teaching since the world was black and white. Um, <laughs> in area schools in the country mm -hmm. and at first as a science teacher and math teacher then as a student counsellor and then I moved to the city and worked in alternative schools schools that uh, take the children after they've been suspended or excluded from other schools and so what sort of year levels did you cover? Um, formal teaching is 5 to 12 oh, okay. um, but in informal teaching, in the area schools, I did a lot of um, relief teaching in year one and two classes, that sort of stuff. Wow, so you've done a little bit of everything. Yep. Okay, great. Um, do you have any particular um, behaviour management strategies that you've used over the years? I've tried just about everything. Mm. Um, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, I can't say that I've got one strategy that I would recommend to everybody. I've looked at your list of questions and the very last question about what were the five things I'd recommend. Mm -hmm. Probably I can't tell you actual strategies that would work all the time, although I've got ideas about that and you've seen a list of those in the, um, in the lectures and things <laughs> like that. What things? Probably things about relationships is probably the first thing. Definitely. And if you've established a relationship with a child, then the level of behaviour management that's necessary is declining mm -hmm. all the time. And kids know good teachers from bad ones, so you've got to be able to prepare a lesson. Mm -hmm. And you've got to make it interesting, and the kids have got to be engaged. And again, if they do all those things, there's a reasonable chance that the level of dispute and drama will decline. Yeah. So that's the starting point for me. Yeah. Good teaching is good teaching and that's good behaviour management and it's all about relationships at the beginning. Okay, and like we heard you say as well uh, before is that um, every teacher will have their own strategies of ways they teach, so every teacher will be unique. But, yeah. Um, yeah, there'll be a toolbox of things that you'll hear about. Uh, Bill Rogers talks about uh, doing this and this and this and giving child take up time and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, others will talk about, um, Glasser will talk about um, being in the child's quality world. Each one will have their own ideas, but in the end you've got to tailor it for your own personality and beliefs, so especially beliefs. You wouldn't say there's a particular behaviour management strategy that would be the most effective? Um, or any ones that you've seen that have been effective in your... Well, probably I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a humanist in that I like to work with people, and, but I also use um, lots of the old behavioralist stuff too. There's times when uh, there'll be a trade-off. If they do something, I do something, and it's pretty obviously a behavioral approach. So, uh, no, I can't say that I've got one thing that... Okay. Uh, probably respect. Yeah. After relationship is respect. If a kid knows they're respected, then yeah. there's a fair chance that... Um, we will get along to do some business. Okay, great. Uh, one of the other questions was, um, and you sort of started to um, give us your view on it, but we said, I want to know what theories um, you think would best incorporate your teaching strategies, and you did start to say humanism. Mm -hmm. So, And there's a bit of the glass of choice theory which pops up quite regularly. Would you like um, to explain to our audience what the glacier um, <laughs> theory is? Well, cho choice theory is about young people deciding for themselves. Right. I can't control somebody else's behaviour. I can only try and influence it, but it's your behaviour to choose. And that the, the core of Glasser stuff is about each child doing stuff to meet their own needs. Mm -hmm. And those needs are about belonging and the, the obvious safety and all that sort of stuff. But um, having fun, being part of a community. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't given you the exact accurate description, but no, it's, right. their behaviour revolves around meeting their needs. Sometimes their behaviours appear to be not meeting their needs, and that's when they've been behaving in such a way that it's got them what they wanted before, yeah. so they keep doing that. They've tried again. So when they throw a tantrum, mm -hmm. previously mum, dad or the teacher has given in to them, so they keep throwing a tantrum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think is important to pass on to other teachers regarding behaviour management? Um, it's a time-consuming business mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be seen separate from teaching though. And too often we have it as a separate part of teaching when in fact it should be the, 
joined in with it mm -hmm. so that when a child is doing schoolwork, they are behaving. Mm -hmm. And really behaviour management is about all of the children, all of the time. It's not just the naughty ones, yeah. but we forget that and we That's only right. pay attention to the naughty ones. So, I've for, vaguely forgotten the question actually. So, um, just a, an important thing to pass on to other teachers regarding behaviour management? Um, well, know that it's everything that mm -hmm. goes on in the classroom. Um, how you greet the children when they come in, what sort of expectations is the classroom organised? Do the kids feel organised? Sometimes the kids will arc up just because the classroom is disorganised and they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Some of the most challenging children, in my experience, prefer to have the most structures around them. And as soon as those structures are removed, they feel lost and they'll react to that. Mm -hmm. So all of the aspects of a classroom become part of what behaviour management is about. And for teachers, it's also be patient. Yeah, um, especially young teachers um, who teachers. think that they've got to young teachers, they've got to <laughs> figure that they're going to change the world really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, be patient. The child didn't end up the way they are overnight, so you shouldn't expect to change it mm -hmm. that quickly either. Great. Okay. Um, do you have uh, an example of where a student has displayed a severe behaviour, and how did the rest of the class respond to that? Hmm. Have you got any good stories? Some stories. Um, <laughs> Of maybe perhaps an effective behaviour management that happened um, to a particular incident? Well, I'll probably be joining several stories together. I do remember in a tech studies room a boy having a six foot, um, nearly two metre long G clamp and he was trying to uh, put it into the head of another student and was explaining to the student what he was going to do to him in no uncertain terms. And uh, I think. That was more about safety to start with. I ended up with him in a bear hug. Well, actually, eventually in a bear hug. Um, I had to avoid getting hit first. Um, but the world I was coming from was that I would deal with such things. Um, and then we went for a long, long, long walk. Um, probably that's not as useful as... I've had a lot of experiences of children throwing chairs and that sort of thing, or asking a child to leave the computer because you've got to go to another lesson and they refuse. Some of the time we'll remove all the students and, and leave that one behind. Yeah. And so we'll do the opposite um, so that we can move, move the class on. Removing the audience is also an important thing. Um, having lots of people around as mm -hmm. bystanders and uh, egging the child on um, very rarely is, is a positive thing. So safety for the person is the sort of thing I think of first. Secondly, it's care for the kid. Mm -hmm. Can I get the weapon away from the child um, in such a way that uh, we can still survive it? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the child needs an escape. Mm -hmm. They need an out. They need an opportunity to save face and be able to leave. Yeah. And so, rather than confront and be in their face, um, I will probably shrink, get smaller, um, stay a distance away from them mm -hmm. so that they don't feel like I'm going to hit them yeah. and often the child just by just by that sort of thing will start to calm mm -hmm. and there's one thing I didn't mention in the lecture which is relevant to this is an inverse thing I use and that's the noisier and rowdier the child gets the quieter and calmer I get mm -hmm. so that as the child is escalating I'm doing the opposite and quite often the child will find that they haven't got anything to react against because I'm not challenging them yeah. and they will start to let go. Mm -hmm. And if it's in a private situation, they can let go without shame and that's the best result then. Yeah, okay, great. So when we're saying, talking about the rest of the class responding, so sometimes it's best perhaps to um, take the rest of the class away yeah. from the child that's misbehaving yeah. and sometimes it might be more appropriate to take the child away from the class itself. Um, and then colleague support becomes critical. If mm -hmm. it's a serious event, mm -hmm. then you need colleagues to support you to uh, either take the class away or to work with the young person. I think it's good for the class teacher to work with the young person as much as possible. Um, again, experience tells me that it's often the deputy or the principal who works with the cranky young person and they form a brilliant relationship with yeah. the child, but the class teacher still hasn't got it because they didn't have time. So sometimes I will take the class away, leave you to look after that child, get them calmed down, and you will sort out an understanding with the child. And so it's your class, your child, mm -hmm. that moves on then. Okay. Um, would you say that your um, teaching approaches are different from 
uh, different to each student, so different genders or races or so forth? Um, yes. Yeah? Um, and I can't always way. spot why or how, mm -hmm. but there are changes that go on. Uh, I'm aware that I will work with an Aboriginal kid differently, mm -hmm. um, and I can't tell you whether it's because of the particular Aboriginality of the child or whether it was the behaviours they were showing. Sure. But I'm more likely to give the child a lot more space mm -hmm. and to in, and give them a lot more opportunity to calm down um, and let them smell over in their brains what's going on. Sometimes silence can be just as powerful yep. as saying something. Um, filling the air with noise sometimes isn't a good thing at all. Sometimes you can sit with a child who's just had a major dispute with somebody and do the occasional head nod if that's what you want to do, but just sit there with the child, giving them space, yep. and eventually they'll start to calm. And often what you'll hear from the child is, well, I think I'll go to the class, go to class now. And that's the chance when you might say, well, can we sort out what's going on? Mm -hmm. It might still be that you suspend it and we come back and we talk further later. Um, the more extreme the child, probably the more space I give them. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's race and all that sort of stuff, I, I'm not experienced enough to tell. I haven't reflected on that enough. So you don't really categorise categorize them as such. It's mainly each child is individual, so you will work out as a teacher. Well, probably something that is important to remember is that all Aboriginal kids aren't the same, mm -hmm. all Asian kids aren't the same. Yeah, that's right. And so make an assumption about one and you'll get a, a surprise that they're yep. not the same. Um, and there'll be some kids that will want to have mm -hmm. a full-on discussion with you. I still remember an Aboriginal fellow who, as soon as he had a dispute with a kid, he would come and see me, he'd sit in my office and he'd say, Trevor, I want to sort this out. Um, that kid pissed me off, I want you to go and hit him on the head with a stick. <laughs> and um, uh, Gareth had just done the manhood stuff from up north and he, he, he knew where he stood in the world. Mm -hmm. He was very serious about that. And so he wanted me to hit him on the head with a stick. And I explained to him, no, Gareth, I can't do that. Well, you're frightened. No, 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 I'm not allowed to do that. Well, I'll go hit him on the head with a stick. No, you can't do that. And we would spend hours talking about this, and he was up front about what was required. Yeah. Um, we, would, we would eventually sort out, I would have to get an Aboriginal education worker involved because the communication was special and different for those, uh, for he and the Aboriginal education worker and they would agree that certain things would be done and that some of the little boys would be told, pull their heads in or somebody would hit him a head with a stick. But um, it would be different from a full-on runner mark who's just got a chair and he's trying to hit me in the head with it. Yeah. Um, and that would be less about race at that, mo at that moment. It might be race separately, sure. but not at that moment. Yeah. Um, the only other things I can think of with race is school teachers being dumb and doing things which are so culturally insensitive as to be ridiculous. Locking a child in a classroom or in a storeroom or in a, a thing. I've had one experience only in my whole life of that happening. Mm -hmm. And you would think that that would be, you know, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. um, but it still happens. But it, it very occasionally it does happen. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, less often than it does now, than yeah. it used to. Okay. Um, when you're outside of the classroom, is mm. um, how like excursions and in the yard, uh, what strategies do you implement? Be with the kids. Um, rather than be with the staff and mill around as a gang of staff, mm -hmm. um, be with the kids if you can. Yes, you mix with the staff as well, that's fine. You've got to do that. But um, you'll find out an amazing amount of stuff about a child's life by being with them in the yard. Mm -hmm. On yard duty, rather than just stand in one spot, you cruise around and you're spotting what's going on, you know, who's doing what to who and who's first best friends with who and who's not anymore and, mm -hmm. and, and you just put it away in your brain bank and that yeah. might be something that you might yeah. need to know, mm -hmm. yes, yes, be the elephant. But you've got to, you've got to know what's going on with the kids so, mm -hmm. so that one day the kid might just say, you know that kid that picked on me the other day, yeah I saw that, um, then you have a little conversation about it. Mm -hmm. so, thank you.